Well, hey guys, welcome back to Chipter Dipped. This is Jared Bryan. I'm going to get you guys a message tonight. Um, I wanted to kind of continue on my messages on why you should fear. Um, and uh, it's a righteous fear. It's the fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of wisdom. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and jump on into this. Um, I'm going to get you guys kind of a quicker message tonight. I just kind of wanted you all to realize, get the concept that I'm telling you all, so you can kind of get it in your heart. And, uh, you know, hopefully it'll help you all. But Passover is coming up. I think it's April 8th through the 16th. And you're going to see um, America is going to start getting hit a lot harder because that's where the curve is taking it as far as, like, um, what's going to be going on between the 8th and 16th. You'll see the numbers start rising, I believe, with a lot of the deaths. There's probably going to be people you know or people that, you know, you might... Um, that are kind of closer to you that you're going to start hearing of that might get coronavirus or might get pestilence, get the plague on them, whatever's going on. I believe that the numbers are going to start increasing in America. And then, you know, I'm sure everywhere the numbers will probably start increasing. But as far as the curve, the trends go, as far as from China, then, then what we've seen in like um, Europe, Italy area, you're going to see, and you know, Spain's numbers are growing. I think America is on that next curve and around 8, you know, the 8 to the 16th, April, you're going to start seeing some changes. So, having said that, that's when Passover is, and it kind of was making my wife and I think, and we were reflecting, you know, Passover, they, they wrote, um, there was a death angel that was going to come by, and it looked crazy to the people, I'm sure, but they were supposed to put the blood on the doorpost. And they were gonna, they were supposed to, you know, the, the death angel basically, if they saw the blood on the doorpost, the angel, he'd pass over the house. That's where you get the term Passover from. And, you know, it says, it says in the Bible, you know, that the death angel would go, and I think it slayed all the firstborn of, of all the um, children that did not have the blood on the doorpost, but it also slayed it of the animals too. So that's pretty serious, guys. So um, the message that I'm getting to you is have the blood of Jesus on the doorpost of your heart. You need to plead the blood of Jesus over you, over your family. And, you know, they locked themselves in. And they protected. They were protected in their homes with the blood on the doorpost. It's symbolic, yes. Um, just like the Ten Commandments are supposed to be written on, on our heart, you know. Um, the blood of Jesus can cover you. You're the temple. Um, and I'm just, I'm just kind of sharing this with you because it was on our spirit when we were kind of reading the word today. Hopefully it helps you guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get into Exodus. If you all want to jump on in with me, we're going to go to Exodus 12, verses 12. It says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Go over to 12, verse 22. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out that door at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord shall... So you're not supposed to go out until the morning. That's going into your home for a time period. So... For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into unto your houses to smite you. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee, to thy sons forever. So you observe it to your sons forever. And it shall come to pass when your children should say unto you, What mean ye of this by this service? Like if your kids are asking y'all, what, what does all this mean? What is the Passover? 
a lot of times, I, I mean, a lot of times people don't even know what the Passover even means. It's because the death angel passed over their houses and they were protected. It's serious. So 27 um, says, That ye shall say, It is a sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. Now, I don't really, I didn't count how many times that, that Pharaoh was stubborn, that he was stubborn towards um, God, letting the people, the, God's people go. But it took many, many plagues. It took many, many things for Pharaoh to say, "All right, just go ahead, get them out of here. Let them, let let my, you know, let the people go." So anyway, it took a lot for that stubbornness. And it and it even says God, you know, let his stubbornness. He, he even let him have that stubbornness. So I just wanted to to let y'all know and break that down for you guys because it's pretty serious what's going on now. We have so much rebellion in our lands. There's so much rebellion in 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 um, the U.S. There's so much rebellion. There was rebellion going on in the ark. It just our right before uh, in Noah's time, people were all you know eating, drinking, being merry. They they were rebellious. Adam and Eve sinned, and you had years that went by, and people um, just started getting acclimated to you know. And it was years, thousands of years before, you know, that Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden. So you had all these generations, you know, they were, they were just got busy with their life. They stopped, you know, they stopped even seeking God's face. They weren't really even caring what God had to do. You know, they were, they were living their best lives now. They were just, they were there in it to win it. They were busy doing whatever they were doing. Um, but it says, uh, Let's let's break this down. Um, like people were partying, getting drunk, feasting, getting married right up into the day Noah entered the ark. Um, so let's just regenerate our Genesis six eleven thirteen. It says the earth was um, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah. The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence. Through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. That's Genesis 6, 11 through 13. So he, he just wanted to wipe out the people because we had become, as a nation, our hearts were continually sinful. We had become such a rebellious nation and um, rebellious to God and you know not even caring about our Creator. And think about all the the false gods and the, the things that people seek after, you know, just in the U.S., but I mean all over, you know, we deal with the, I'm in Mexico right now, and they have the Day of the Dead, but you have you have so many false gods that are worshipped all throughout the lands, and God is a jealous God. He's a, he's a righteous God, and um, but he's also a jealous God. He wants, he wanted, you know, he used to walk with, with his creation. He used to, he used to be able to dwell and we have pushed God so far away that he is, he is like, his, his, his wrath is stirring up. So I just wanted you all to realize that, you know, some people always think of Jesus and God as almost hokey pokey. Like, you know, they have this effeminate looking Jesus and all that. No, Jesus is coming back with fire in his eyes. He's coming back on a white horse. He came with peace once and now he's coming back with a sword. So anyway. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna break this down real quick um, because Exodus. All right, let's go to um, let's go to um, uh, we'll go to Deuteronomy um, 31 verse 27. For I know that I rebellion and it's stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death. Let's skip down to 29. For I know that after my death you will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days, because ye do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. So we are provoking. I mean, this is Deuteronomy, and it's talking, and yes, it's Old Testament. 
but it is an example for us today. Yes, Jesus, he ended he ended the Old, Old Testament, but really he also fulfilled it. Let's go over to let's go to um let's go to Corinthians real quick so you can understand what I'm saying. Corinthians 3 verses 11 through 15 we're going to read. Okay? So get this real quick. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. I'm talking about the Old Testament. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. The Old Testament is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. So just like I was talking about the Ten Commandments written on your heart, putting the blood of Jesus on your heart, you know, it says, take, take, a, my, my, take my body, take my blood. He's, he's trying to tell you something. So what I'm saying in this hour is you need to get the blood of Jesus on your heart. And you cannot fear the coronavirus. You cannot fear these plagues. And these, this, the coronavirus is just the beginning, people. It's This is the beginning of sorrows, as it talks about in Matthew, because you're going to start seeing loved ones and friends and family. People are going to start dying around you. I'm just being blunt. There's this, this is the beginning of sorrows for a lot of people to start realizing that it's hard. I'm sure it's hard, because we have had life one way for so long. I mean, you go back to Exodus. Let's go. Um, let's go back to. Mm, uh, let's go to. Let's see. And their children. And, uh, no, I'm not going to get into Exodus right now. But it was basically we've we've been we've been accustomed to a lifestyle, and it's it's going to change. The lifestyle that you knew is going to change. You are, it's not going to be the same. We're dealing with an end time situation. This is just the beginning. It just, just like, just like that, um, the hour that cometh, you know, you're not supposed to be, you're supposed to be sober. You're supposed to be ready. You're supposed to be waiting for the Lord and, and alert. You're supposed to be sober minded. You're supposed to, just like the, uh, 10, the virgin. Let's do that. Uh, or the, the five virgins. Let's read that real quick. It says, um, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five foolish. They that were um, foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So they were slumbered and asleep. At, and at the midnight hour, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out and meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us, wise, what well, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Right? Okay. There you go. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Matthew 25, 1 through 13. So you don't know the day or the hour. The bridegroom is coming. I believe God has given us a honeymoon phase. He's given you some time to get to know, to, to start preparing yourself for the bridegroom. He's given us time, people, to prepare your heart, prepare yourself for Christ's return. Christ is coming soon. Jesus is coming in the clouds on a white horse. He's coming soon. 
the hour is near. It says, it says he's going to come as a thief in the night. A thief doesn't let you know when he's coming. He doesn't, he doesn't let you know. He, come, he comes when you're sleeping in your deep sleep. So be watchful, be ready. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Be wise and be ready, just like the wise virgins, not the unwise virgins that had to go out and buy and sell and that were out doing what they shouldn't have been doing when the bridegroom came. So anyway, I wanted to get that message to you guys. I want to read one more thing real quick because this is serious. It says, Luke 17... Um, We'll go to 17 verses 26 and we'll read through 29 and then we'll end it, okay? All right, so it says, um, 26 says, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. So people were partying, drinking, being, getting married, all that, right up until the time that Noah had to get his family into the ark before the waters came. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. The same day, it says... So you're not going to get raptured out of here, people. Just want to let you all know that. I've said that many times before, but it says the same day. You know, it's pretty blunt. This is New Testament. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So, I just wanted you all to end on that. It's going to be like the same day when the Son of Man is revealed. It's pretty self-explanatory, guys. Just like... You know, lot, same day situation, breaks it down right there. It says the the earth, you, you know, everything's going to be darkened. And that's why everyone's going to see the Son of Man returning. So just get prepared. I want you all to prepare yourselves. Start fearing the Lord your God. And none of these plagues and stuff will come upon you. Because you're going to write it on the doorpost of your heart. Start pleading the blood of Jesus over you. Go get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then ask for the baptism, the Holy Ghost, and your spirit. Ask, ask for God to start, uh, ask for the Holy Spirit to start speaking to you when you read this Bible. You need to start reading, reading the Word, getting the Word, because the Lord will speak to you. This is the living Word. Okay, guys? All right, you guys have a blessed night. And uh, remember, don't get chipped. Don't get dipped. All right, bye, guys.